Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Paul Gillen, and we're here at MIT IQ, the Information Quality Symposium. It's a symposium that's evolved into a Chief Data Officer event, and theCUBE is SiliconANGLE's live studio. We go out to the events, we extract a signal from the noise. Mark Crisco is here. He's the Deputy Director of Enterprise Information uh, for the Office of the Under Secretary of Defense. Mark, welcome to theCUBE. Oh, thank you. So that's the shortened version of your title. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, what is it exactly that you do? Um, what I do is I work for, for the Under Secretary of Defense Acquisition Technology and the Logistics, Mr. Frank Kendall, and we're the organization that supplies him the information for his decision making. He, his senior leaders, as well as working with his services and components on giving him the information. So you're a, a practitioner in information management, information quality? Acquisition, so a subject matter expert as well as that. Uh, I always think our trade is a bit of jack of all trades, master of none, because we work from a transformation perspective, we work from a subject matter expert perspective, acquisition in our case, uh, as well as technology and information management. So we cover a, a pretty large bandwidth. Well, I'm always interested, intrigued by, you know, somebody who's got subject matter expert and you're applying it to a particular you know, generalized discipline like information quality. Mm -hmm. So how, can you talk a little bit about th that dynamic? As a, as a subject matter expert in acquisition, what does that mean specifically in relation to sort of information quality? Well, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. From an experience perspective, I, I always found that was the key, is information management in and of itself can be its own abstract term. Right. Um, the key is how do you bring value from your subject matter expertise perspective and link the two together to bring value to the organization. So it's building the bridge from acquisition and information management because data is the fuel that fuels the decision making and working in the process. Um, it's critically important to understand what we are trying to achieve, what the Under Secretary of Defense is trying to achieve with data, not just data management for data management's sake. So let's start there. I mean, what are those you know, overriding objectives that the organization is trying to achieve? Well, certainly in Mr. Kendall's case, it is he articulates his vision via better buying power, and that is the, the mechanism which he highlights where he wants to improve both the acquisition process, the acquisition program management, and the execution of the department. I mean, we have a critical role in supporting the nation's capabilities of delivering capabilities to the warfighter and protecting the nation. He always wants to do that in the cliche term of better, faster, cheaper, and how do you do that? Um, he has been very key on having data as the key of that fundamentation. So, go ahead. Paul. Well, so make that real. I mean, we talk about better, faster, cheaper, yeah, 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 but, but can you give us an example of how data quality enables that result? Well, data quality, uh, the question is, and we have a, a stock three questions that we ask everyone. What are you trying to achieve? Because the use cases can be very broad. Um, what do you want to see in your information? And whether it be in acquisition oversight program management, so we don't have cost overruns, so we have early warnings as associated with that. Whether it be logistics to ensure that we have an appropriate logistics portfolio for the programs. Uh, or whether it be POM, or as we would talk about it as the resourcing, financial resources, that we've adequately resourced programs to move forward. That's where data is the key. And from his lens, as the senior, the defense acquisition executive, the senior most official associated with acquisition, it's his role that we fuel them, that he can work through those issues as he sees with his organization. And how can bad data derail one of those processes? Make that real. Well, bad data or uh, undefined data. Let's talk about it in both time because you could have both dad, bad data and data you really don't understand the meaning mm -hmm. to. Okay. And I think it's pretty important that we put some due diligence to understand so we can better advise him as he moves forward. How can it derail? Uh, your decisions are maybe not as good as they could be. Um, but then again, it is a real balancing effort of saying how much data do you use in those decisions and are you getting the right data and do you have a sense of what the condition of the data is. I always like to focus on we're going to move with information that we have 
And part of our role is to give a sense of, is it good, is it bad, is it good enough, and let the decision makers uh, use that as best they can. So we're really in a support role So for in this example, you, decisions might not be as good as they could be. It's, you might be not leveraging your buying power, you might be paying too much, mm -hmm. uh, might be choosing the wrong supplier. Is that, are those good examples? Well, well I think they're good examples, but I think, you know, sometimes we, we make always the best decision we can with the information we go to war, I think Secretary Rumsfeld, when he was secretary, said you go to war with the, um, the army you have, not the army you wish you have. <laughs> um, we make decisions based upon the data we have, and data is an imperfect science, and I think that's the one condition that we must always recognize, is if we understand the degree of imperfection the, or the lack of information, we still are making good decisions. It's not that we're making bad decisions, we're making good decisions, it's just our information is less than perfect. Yeah, but you said earlier you could make better decisions. I'm trying to understand mm -hmm. what that means. That, that in, in your world, that means you would optimize your pricing, you would... You, you could optimize it. pricing, you could monitor the program, you could be sure it's adequately resourced, you could engage with your vendors more completely and more specifically. Uh, um, Get more value out of the engagement. Right. So, uh, in, in many situations, information management has been about, the value of information management has been about protecting the organization against um, either data loss or exposures to, mm -hmm. to data, you know, legal issues, et cetera. And it sounds like in your world, the, the focus of the value of information management has always been on the, 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 the asset piece, mm -hmm. not the liability piece, is that fair? Right. I think that's fair, and I think that comes from the perspective of being a subject matter expert in acquisition. You always have to focus on the value first. Those conditions of security and management of information are just as core to ours. And I think that's why you have to cut across the range a bit, because both of them, I mean, which one do you trade on? More value without security or just security without value? You have to do both simultaneously. Because having information, um, I, to give you a sense of size of the organization, the undersecretary oversees about $1.6 trillion in terms of buying power. And he's representing 150,000 acquisition professionals in the Department of Defense. That's 37 s services and components. It just, it's big. It's mind boggling. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so in understanding that we're worldwide in coverage, we may not have big numbers kind of in commercial of user perspective, whether it be Facebook or LinkedIn or those types of numbers. But in governmental institutions, I know, I know none bigger or know of none more complicated. Um, but he worries about over 1,500 programs in some way, shape, or form. And he looks at over about 150 of them on an annual basis, monthly and quarterly. Yeah, I mean, he has a full-time job monitoring that, right. that portfolio. I, I could see, not that I would ever even dream about running something that large, but if I did, I would just say, just give me half a percentage point. <laughs> and, and yeah. I'm going to drop a lot of money to the taxpayer's you know, bottom line. So, well, so, but, there's mm -hmm. a but in, in that question, which is how do you balance, I mean, because there's an obvious you know, sort of thing to attack, that big nut, let's, let's, let's shave half a point off of every transaction that we do. How do you balance that with the value piece of the, the equation? So I think an, an interesting thing, and I certainly can't speak for the Undersecretary of Defense, but I can send the signal of what's outside his door. He says, in God we trust, all others bring data. <laughs> So he has the sign outside his door of what he's based it upon. And in many ways, uh, this administration, a, a bit of the previous administration, has invested in that shift to information to fuel that. Um, because the danger is in organizations as large, you pick on one, but you miss the entire spectrum of what you could. And uh, we are a big organization, and he wants to power the logistics community, the acquisition community, the engineering community. They are big in institutions in and of themselves, and he wants to lead those efforts. And one of the key points has been through data and information. Do you think that the, the sentiment that you just expressed is somewhat administration specific or is it here to stay? I mean, I think of smaller example, baseball mm -hmm. and Moneyball and, and mm -hmm. Sabermetrics mm -hmm. and some teams are using, but every team uses it, of course. Mm -hmm. Some teams more than others. We I mean, live in Boston. They're, mm -hmm. they're clearly violating all the edicts that they said they wouldn't violate a couple <laughs> <of> years ago <laughs> as they fail, but it seems like 
now in this age that we live in, this is here to stay. Do you, mm -hmm. do you believe that or do you think that it still will be sort of administrative specific? Maybe somebody will you know, come in as president and say, all right, we've more gut feel here. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, well you probably tackle that, tackle that question in two, two forms. One, I think information management is here to stay and information and data fueling the processes are clearly here to stay. The institutions are moving that way in terms of academia. We're bringing skill sets up. Now, each administration is going to put their perspective on what they believe is important and that's usually left for them to do that. I don't care to venture into that, but I can always see that whomever I work for as a career civil servant is that we would be of service to them and providing them information for where we are. And um, it, it has really been an emerging community, both of data science, data management, and value. Uh, I think we've seen that in commercial industry. I think that's why we have forums like this at MIT that are. You profound. started. I'm sorry. I don't Go want ahead. to cut you off. You started your career nearly 25 years ago buying F-18s, as I understand. Yes, sir. What have you seen happen to the quality of data uh, and, and the you know, your ability to, to to really mine that quality for? Uh, value from uh, from that quality data over that period of time. So over 25 years, I think I would go back and uh, you touch on the F-18 experience of being a major weapon system buyer, but before that I worked in retail. And I've seen data emerge over my entire career, both commercially and federally, to be cores. And we've had many starts and runs at getting better. And I would argue that we've probably gotten better over the entire three decades of doing this, both commercially. I remember working for Lord & Taylor, I like to tell this little vignette, um, 30 years ago, they were still handwriting sales checks. They were having data, it was just slower, manually, you had a lot of people to work mm -hmm. on it. Uh, one of my first roles was to um, implement registers. I mean, at that point, small microcomputers to ring things up. Uh, I could remember 30 years ago implementing stocks by location, which were now automated in CRTs. I think we've been on this journey, and I think uh, those of us working in this profession find ourselves in a unique point of time of implementing the information age, as we talked about when we went into school or learned about. Um, we are just at that nexus of the transformation from an industrial society to an information society. And Mark, you mentioned uh, data science yes, before. Sir. Um, you know, that term is interesting. A lot of people, when we have this discussion, say, well, data scientists have been around forever. We just didn't call them data scientists. It's kind of the cool thing. How has that so-called data science role evolved within your organization? Well, I think I could sense that it has, has evolved in the ability to obtain even more data today because electronics are certainly a part of it. And it's opened up different issues of access control. Um, I would argue we probably had data science for a long time. We gave people a bunch of sets of data, said take a look at it, study it, come back and tell us what you make think. Make sense out of it. <laughs> yeah, make sense out of this because we don't know what's occurring either in the organization, the program. Pick a value chain associated with it. I think today it's all becoming closer and consolidating down in some ways where we can gain access. And I think everything from this administration and this president trying to open up data and making that more accessible. I also think the technology communities have changed. Um, we now talk about things in open APIs and APIs of where we can fuse data. So I think our speed and our abilities have been come up. Now we have to bring our organizations up of how do we manage in that world? I think that is going to be the biggest challenge. How will we manage? We've got, uh, we, we talk a lot about big data these mm -hmm. days. Now we've been talking primarily with you about operational efficiency, using data to make the operation run better. Mm -hmm. Looking more at the analytical side and, and how you use it for, for predictions and to, to, to see bigger trends, bigger picture, what is your agency doing in that respect, if anything, right now? Well, uh, Mr. Kendall, again, as uh, that individual, annually for the past two years, he's if issued the state of the acquisition and is using data as a part of that and having analysts. and. That is not my role to be the Uber analyst in this role, but we do provide the data to the analysts to look at that. And generally and simply speaking, he looks at it in terms of uh, process, he looks in terms of how his organization's performing and how his programs are performing. Uh, to give a sense to the American people, to Congress, of where are we in this journey? 
um, we should be always striving every day to get better, not just one fell swoop of one year from now we'll be better. It's every day we do that. Part of the, um, part of the themes that we hear in the commercial world, uh, we're talking about data science before, we're talking now about you know, getting better, improving. One of the techniques that people are trying to, to, to use to do that is this notion of the citizen data scientist. Mm -hmm. It used to be, and still is, right? You have a big data warehouse, mm -hmm. you've got some analysts, you're kind of you know, scrubbing the data, looking at the data, you know, I want a single version of the truth, mm -hmm. you know, we've all heard this. Right. And you have a, a few experts that you have to go through. Uh, they build a you know, model or a cube or whatever you call mm -hmm. it, and right. you, you get an answer out you know, a couple months later. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an inflexible approach, and now we see all these new techniques to speed that up, lower the cost, et cetera, beautiful. It's still hard for an individual that's on the front lines of decision making to get access to the right data that he or she needs. Do you see that notion of what I called citizen data scientist, you know, coming to fruition at any time in our lifetimes? Well, I, I think it is, and I think depending on how you would like, I'll answer that question in two ways. Um, all our procurement data is already in the public domain. You can access it, you can analyze it, you can have your opinion on that data doesn't mean your opinion's right or wrong, it means you have access to the data. In other cases, and in internally, because we deal with different sets of data in different conditions, pre-decisional, secret data, uh, sensitive data, um, we've worked internally with the components of saying, how do we unlock that for ourselves? Mm -hmm. Maybe not in the complete uh, public forum, or if it is, we better know how we're managing it, because that's a large portfolio. Mm. Uh, we could tip um, many organizations. So we're learning how to manage in that environment better. Um, about three or four weeks ago, Rand, it, it, we sponsored a study with Rand to look at how do we manage information and do we have the proper things in place that we understand what to do managerially, not just technically. Mm -hmm. And we could do better at that. And it's, it's shed some lights on our organizationally that we're going to have to think about it, not just locking it up from a technical perspective where we've been strong points on. Is there any thoughts about uh, sort of crowdsourcing some of this process? I mean, one of the benefits of, of standardizing your data and publishing it, uh, making it transparent, is that others can then take it and do their own analyses and maybe help you to, to get better. Is, is, are there any initiatives like that underway? Um, the answer is, in a department as big as ours, absolutely, and I could think of two examples. Um, one on specific acquisitions where organizations like DARPA had crowdsourced design patterns mm. and saying, here's what I want to achieve, let's crowdsource design patterns and let's move forward with the acquisition. I could also see that our data, as we make it available, we do have a crowdsourcing mentality because it's not only us obtaining access to it, but providing it back to the Army, Navy, and Air Force and saying, do with it what you need. We also have that mentality within the department is let's collect once, use many, um, so we can get those different perspectives. And that's what Mr. Kendall would oversee and, and correct that. So thoughts on uh, this event, um, some of the takeaways maybe that you, uh, actually you just got here, so that's sort of a really But I was here question. last year. But how about, you were here last year, right, and, and sort of takeaways in general from this event has evolved over the last nine years and sort of expectations, things that you want to take away or, or learn this year. Um, I'm, I'm really keen on the value proposition associated with data. And I made this comment last year when I participated that uh, this is one of the forums that not only focused on the technology and the management aspects of information and the technology, but the value of it. And I learned an awful lot last year, and, and my participation this year um, is to further encourage those types of behavior, because it's not a just about the technology community, it's about the managerial community working in this space, and, and I find that very key here. Uh, same question we asked James Mung, actually, uh, about, the, uh, about what commercial CDOs can learn from your experience. They're tackling now many of the problems that your agency has been tackling for many years. Well, and I think that's vice versa, too. They've been tackling many issues that we're starting to tackle, too. Um, I am aware that the Secretary of Defense had met with the uh, commercial industry out there in Silicon Valley to mm -hmm. further dialogues associated with that. Depending on our use case, they have a very different use case than we do in terms of commercial commercialization of data, um, we have a very different use case. I think we can 
we're going to have to deal with threats in our information infrastructures for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I think we can learn from each other. I, I, I see various discussions occurring on today, but things will emerge for us to better manage in the future, both commercially as well as a, a federal government. All right, Mark Crisco, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate your flexibility and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the event and really appreciate your insights. All right, thank you very much. All right, Glad to right be there, here. everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is MIT IQ. We're here in Cambridge, Mass. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back. <laughs>